Um, so I'm just, mine is a very lightweight thing. It's about uh, VLE bulletin boards and making group work oversight and student partnership better. So, um, so this is the spoiler alert to what I'm going to talk about, boards in general, which I'm sure you know about. There's the context, a little bit about challenge-based learning and how I used uh, boards there, and some of the benefits and some reflections, because we're always meant to be reflective. So um, boards are nothing new. They've been around for ages. They were kind of at the start of um, uh, kind of computing before everything went graphical, we had boards. Um, they've been used in education for a good while. Um, and most of you have probably used them yourself. So if you can put into, give me a, an uptick if you can, um, have you've used um, boards before in your teaching? Uh, okay, well, I'll just move it on. Um, so as you know, the probably good way of dealing with large numbers of students, um, it allows them to, to share their ideas and opinions and it can be anonymous, which kind of gives a lot more, more freedom. So I, I think boards are, are great. Um, but, you know, as with everything, there's a downside. So um, one of the ones that I would have used in the past would have been Padlet. Um, and Padlet is kind of nice and, you know, kind of got colours and stuff. Um, and then, so there's one main issue with this in that it's... Um, it's an external board, um, and then of course GDPR issues come in. So um, they could be sharing information on, you know, the IP address of somebody who has posted something, and there's um, there's GDPR issues to consider that wasn't around in the past. And we have to think about um, is the information where the server is based, you know, is it in in the EU, EU, EU or is it in the states? And that kind of creates issues and. You know, we don't want to kind of have to deal with all of that kind of stuff, so it's murky. Um, and then another thing happened with Padlet that they gave you a limit, and once you'd reached the limit, you couldn't create any more of them. So it's a lot of with a lot of this ed tech stuff. You know, it's wonderful, it's free, it starts off as free, and then it kind of becomes not free. But anyway, I digress. So the um, the solution is to have an integrated internal board within your your VLE. Um, so this is kind of, you know, your safety, you know, it's in, inside the, the tent, if you like. Um, the students can only get to the board if they're, you know, abiding by the in-house re restrictions. So if they're registered on your course, they can get access to the board. And of course, you've got the traditional benefits of the board. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you the context, because uh, I always think it's important to know what you're dealing with. So um, I was uh, teaching a new module this semester on uh, the wonderful title of topics and innovative and disruptive technology so it's got all the buzzwords that you might wish to have it was thought to fourth year enterprise computing students so this is sort of computing for business students there was 35 dcu students on the class and three eciu so the european consortium of innovative universities so that's dcu's eu consortium so um and they were obviously uh, participating remotely so the module um you know, has all the buzzwords, you know, it's got innovative and disruptive technologies, it's got the universal United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and it's got challenge-based learning. Can I ask people to type into the chat how many universal sustain, UN SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, there are? You see, without looking, without looking. So, Rob, at least you can put in a number, 19, 17, 17. Okay, very good. We've got 17. So, Rob probably has a few more things that he wants the world to be worried about, but that's good. Okay, so um, so in the challenge-based learning, challenge-based learning is an enormous thing, but I'll whittle it down to the three different phases. So, the engage phase, you decide on what kind of particular topic you're going to work on. You could have a hackathon to do that. Investigate, you research a solution, and then in the act phase, you actually carry out the solution. So, that's the... 30 second summary of challenge based learning. Um, so, in the um, engage phase, um, obviously, you want the students to decide the topic. Um, you want to be able to get students to be able to discuss the topics, share ideas, see what they're interested in. So, when I started off, you know, we looked at all the development goals and then we had to try and you know, put students into groups of which topic they wanted to do, what were their interests, and kind of um, tease things out a bit. So, um, the board was, was great for this. So, um, I'm sure you already know this, Rob. I'm missing the three that you have that I don't know about. Um, the, so, the, the 
one, first one is no poverty, two is zero hunger, etc., etc. So you can see I set up a board and it's got these nice little different colours. And students were asked to post in their, their thoughts. So there's a lot of poverty in Ireland and the rest of the world. Um, you see people upvoting and whatever. So um, I can do a quick visual thing here. So the um, one of the topics that was really interesting to the students was topic number seven because that had farmer comments and we could kind of it allowed us to home in on that. So I thought the board was really um, great for that. Um, you can, can see it's anonymous and then, you know, obviously, you know, the um, because I was doing this, you know, kind of remotely as well. So the students abroad could see it, the students in the class could see it. We could discuss it and say, oh, I think there should be more effort put into getting food in places that struggle with food. And, you know, we can talk about that and whatever. So it's it's a very dynamic way. And people can, as you're talking, people can kind of give an upvote to something or they can add a, a comment in at the end. So I was using these in kind of in, in real time and I, I found it very useful. Um, so in the investigate phase, you, you learn about the context, you explore various options and you develop a solution. So, for example, um, one of the groups was looking at microplastics in the sea and they were looking at the technology that could um, kind of detect that and how they would, would deal with that. Another group was doing retrofitting of uh, commercial buildings um, in Dublin and they were kind of looking at what were the challenges at the moment, what technology was available and, and how they could kind of integrate that into current current building plans. So every week the groups would, um, you know, I would have a, a board, I would be group zero, most important group of course, and then there was eight groups and this, each group had to kind of put in their relevant information. I'll show you in a slide in a minute. So um, Tom will hopefully you'll be pleased uh, in, to, to know that we were using Gaster presentations, there's a different member came up each time and they had to kind of they would fill out the board and then they would um, do a quick gaster explaining it and then there would be feedback and questions from the peers and, and myself. Okay, so for example, this is an example from um, one of the earlier weeks. So we're getting the students to look at, I want them to state the overall topic, what their challenge was, the potential technologies they were using, who the group members were and who was the speaker for that week. So obviously you can see that for, for me, this allowed me to track to make sure that, you know, who was speaking on a weekly basis. So um, we just look at group one here. So group one was talking about data centers, their consumption and how it can be reduced or how their energy source can be substituted from the national grid. Um, so this is the challenge, they're finding a location to live and different technologies. So you can see that group one would come up and they'd tell me about their idea and their challenge and they'd go through each of this and then I'd ask the, the students in the class, say, well, does anybody have any thoughts or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, and then it would be, you know, I'd, I'd give them some um, feedback as well. So, uh, to, so they can use different technology. And then the nice thing about this is um, sometimes people wonder if they're kind of sharing stuff with the other groups copy it or whatever, but each group had a different topic. So um, there was no, so, you know, a student can, could give as much support and feedback as they wanted to group one because they know it wouldn't be taking away from them or they were going to copy their ideas. So, um, and you can see that, so I, I can see what students are thinking here um, and, and it kind of forces them to be succinct <clears throat> and to actually have something to say on each topic. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I found it, uh, <coughs> water, Monica, uh, really useful for that. Um, Just five minutes there, Monica, thanks. Grant, yes, I would be very quick, Rob. Um, so I've also used it in the ACT phase. So each week I would have done one of these with the students. Um, sometimes I did it at the start of class, sometimes I did it at the end after we'd gone through the particular topic and I'd ask them to look at their solution through that lens, so it's societal impacts or whatever. Um, um, it's also good for anonymous feedback, so the students can see each other's comments and I can review with the students and you can see clarity and you can explore interesting stuff. So um, if you see here, thoughts and video, so I was, did video, video feedback in the module, topic for another conversation. Um, you know, so what do they think of the video, um, they put it in, so you can see, I mean, this is a screenshot, so there's positive and negative comments here. Um, would you like it again? Um, and anything else? So um, you can see that there's, you know, you, you can ask kind of any questions that they like and they can put in things. And again, so the students are in the class, they're doing this individually. They can see what other students are happening. I can talk about it online and the uh, international students can, can see it as well. So um, it's very, it's really simple to set up um, and it's very uh, clean. Okay. 
so the benefits, so um, students can show their workers, can see what those students have done. So like, obviously, you'd want everybody to rise to the, the level of the good students. I can see their progress. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, I can use my time efficiently, especially when you're doing group interaction. So I would have been going around each group as well. Um, but the students could be working on this as I was going out around each thing. And I can keep watching that and kind of commenting. See, people haven't got so much information on this, or you're, this is not the information that I want, whatever. Um, and it's good for group work. So it makes group work work. So the spell checker didn't like that, but I, 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 I did. OK, so Robbie, would you like to know my final slide? So the in the challenge-based learning approach, we're trying to engage students in real, relevant, and related situations to what they're studying. And it has it's really got a students as partnership approach. But obviously, students as partnership approach means that you must be giving students a chance to put in their information, involve them in kind of their learning and whatever, right? So um, boards give students an opportunity to have a voice. They have more control over their learning so they can say, you know, I don't know so much about this, or can you tell me more about that, or whatever. Um, and I found that it, it enabled me to support the students better, and I would uh, definitely recommend it. Phew. OK, I'm finished, Rob. Thank you, Monica. A professional, as always, right in on time. And we, we do have another minute or two for, for, for questions. Um, thanks very much for that, Monica. It uh, sounds like a, a really wonderfully engaging and authentic module that you were, that you were teaching this semester. I see Gavin has uh, a question in the chat. Is the bulletin board a Moodle plugin, uh, which uh, clearly it is? Rob, you know more about the actual technologies of the board, um, but it's really simple to set up. It is, yeah. No, it's, a, it, it's a freely available Moodle um, plugin on the Moodle plugin. I'll answer your, your question in a minute, Charm, Suzanne, but put into the chat, how many times do you think, so I have eight groups, right? So how many weeks do you think it took me to get all groups zero to eight done in the right order? Because the first few weeks I'd miss a group and groups say, you didn't, you haven't got group five there. And other groups say, you haven't got group four this week. So it actually took me a few weeks to actually get the numbers one to eight, you know, kind of primary school maths. Anyway, uh, Su uh, Suzanne, your question there comes to the video fees were um, like anything in to do with technology initially not. Um, and then it, it kind of got easier. And I, I got an email from a student separate to all of this said that they really liked it. Um, but one of the things I kind of copped on, I had a bit of, you know, I had a bit of a hair, bad hair day one day and I couldn't do the videos and they go, we'll have to wait and whatever. And then I realized I could have done audio. You know, I mean, that video is obviously better because you can imagine me, I'm always looking at it and I think it's really nice. And, and this, you know, so there's a bit of me there, but, you know, the, I could have done audio as well. Um, and then it would stop me having to worry about lights and all of that sort of stuff. But um, I'm on a learning curve, Suzanne. I'm definitely not an expert. And yeah, no, thanks, Monica. That's actually, um, I was wondering about that because, as you say, sometimes you just don't feel like looking at yourself on video. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, million, Suzanne. Just one question from me, Monica. You, so obviously you've used these types of tools in the past. You mentioned Padlet before. Uh, having used now the Moodle board, um, how does that rate with your previous experiences of, of tools like this? Um, I think it's grand. It's just simple. It's not faffy. Um, there's no advertising. And I, like, I just really like the fact that it's embedded. So I know that only the students are going to get in there. And it kind of makes it more of a, this is related to your module sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but you know I, i'm kind of relatively easy to please so, yeah. excellent excellent good to hear if anyone else is interested in using the moodle um a board plugin i know we have a moodle munch webinar coming up on the first of february where we'll be talking a bit more in detail about the moodle board so if anyone is, is interested in that you can find out more information at dcu.e forward slash moodle munch 